There are concerns that we're now moving towards that sort of geopolitics of a zero-sum game of the Cold War. What would that mean for some of your members, which include companies like Caterpillar, General Electric, Visa as well? Yeah, it can't be good for those companies. I mean, obviously, we understand why it's important to challenge some of China's practices and policies. But we also uh, are very concerned that the two governments find a way to de-escalate these tensions and work with each other. Um, the U.S. needs to gain support from the international community, from our, our other key trading partners, Europe, Canada, uh, Japan, and others, uh, to put pressure on China to change. But a pure, we've, we've said all along, a pure unilateralist approach with escalating tariffs uh, and China retaliating, that can't be good for either our economy or China's. And in the long run, it's much better if they find a path uh, forward. I hope that the President Xi Jinping will be able to do business when they meet uh, later this month. And yet, Secretary Ross has said last week that the U.S. still plans to increase tariffs on Chinese goods to 25 percent in January. Are your members ready for this? I, I, we think it would be a mistake. It, it is going to have a big impact on uh, U.S. Uh, consumers and on U.S. industry because those tariffs uh, bounce back to hit uh, our global supply chains. Uh, companies today really depend on, on a global marketplace and global production. And then, of course, the retaliation by China, which has already hit U.S. agriculture right. in a big way. But, Rufus, you know, the, I think Sherry makes a great point because January is really when this is going to come to a head. So what can, what can the U.S. and China get out of Buenos Aires? I don't think you can expect a, a, a real uh, concrete deal. I think the best we're going to get out of Buenos Aires is an agreement by the two leaders on a path forward. That is sort of a deal to a make a deal. Yeah, a framework. A framework. So what's a, a win from your perspective on a framework in Buenos Aires, knowing that these tariffs are coming down the pipeline in January? I, I think a willingness on China's part to talk about some of these issues that, unfortunately, Xi Jinping seems to be saying are off the table. Such as? Uh, well, it, it's uh, many of the elements of its uh, uh, Made in China 2025 policies, particularly with respect to forced technology transfer, IP violations, and other things, a willingness to talk to the U.S. about it, uh, and on the U.S.'s part, a willingness to back off from uh, tariffs while the two are, are negotiating. And I think, actually, the WTO can play a role here, because mm -hmm. the leadership of the WTO and a number of other countries have already said, uh, we want a reform agenda that might address many of these issues. It might be easier for China to to uh, deal with some of these issues in a multilateral mm. context than a pure bilateral one. And Rufus, you've mentioned that need for a united front against China, of course, on the sidelines of the G20. We are expecting the U.S., Mexico, and Canada to sign that USMCA deal or NAFTA 2.0. But how optimistic are you that this deal will actually get through Congress? I think it's going to get through, but not uh, without some difficulty. And from our point of view, from the businesses I represent, a big concern is we're still imposing national security restrictions on Canada and Mexico on steel and aluminum. That is probably the biggest concern our industries have because it's, it's incompatible with uh, a new agreement. Uh, we shouldn't be using national security on, on our free trade partners. Uh, I hear that as a bargaining chip. You think Democrats are going to be able to get rid of that from Mexico and Canada to get rid of that uh, particular issue, especially as they negotiate in the new Congress, House Democrats? Well, all I know is that the businesses <laughs> I represent try. are pushing hard for it. We just <laughs> sent a letter to USTR from a very broad alliance of, of manufacturers and farm groups saying we need to get rid of these things. They've created tensions. They've created retaliation against yeah. U.S. agriculture. Uh, we hope that Democrats and Republicans on the Hill will look at that seriously. I think there is a lot of support for getting rid of those restrictions in Congress. And that, I think, would, would really speak to what Democrats need, because I don't see how the Democrats vote against USMCA at all. I think you're going to have a lot of Democrats ready to support it. I think the outcome of this election demonstrated that uh, there is support for, uh, for North American trade, for We're sure.